Hello, friends. My name is Mr. Reed, and I'm the teacher, man. Thank you for joining me for today's Read Aloud. A friend of mine, who is also the principal at my school, started sharing some of his favorite books, which has inspired me to do the same. For as they say, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. If you enjoy today's reading, I encourage you to check out some of the readings done by Mr. Tomasi. I've included a link to his channel in the video description. I'm wearing one of my favorite hockey sweaters today of the London Knights. Unlike other sports, hockey uniforms are called sweaters rather than jerseys. The book I'm going to read today is titled The Hockey Sweater. It was originally written in French by Rock Carrier. This is one of my favorite short stories, and it is also one of the first books I remember purchasing as a kid. In fact, I got this copy when I was in grade one or two at our school's book fair. One of the reasons I wanted this book as a kid is because the picture on the cover reminded me what it was like to put on my equipment before playing hockey. I hope you enjoy the story. The Hockey Sweater by Rock Carrier The winters of my childhood were long, long seasons. We lived in three places, the school, the church, and the skating rink. But our real life was on the skating rink. Real battles were won on the skating rink. Real strength appeared on the skating rink. The real leaders showed themselves on the skating rink. School was a sort of punishment. Parents always want to punish their children, and school is their most natural way of punishing us. However, school was also a quiet place where we could prepare for the next hockey game, lay out our next strategies. As for church, we found there the tranquility of God. There we forgot school and dreamed about the next hockey game. Through our daydreams, it might happen that we would recite a prayer. We would ask God to help us play as well as Maurice Richard. I remember very well the winter of 1946. We all wore the same uniform as Maurice Richard, the red, white, and blue uniform of the Montreal Canadiens, the best hockey team in the world. We all combed our hair like Maurice Richard, and to keep it in place we used a kind of glue, a great deal of glue. We laced our skates like Maurice Richard. We taped our sticks like Maurice Richard. We cut his pictures out of all the newspapers. Truly, we knew everything there was to know about him. On the ice, when the referee blew his whistle, the two teams would rush at the puck. We were five Maurice Richards against five other Maurice Richards throwing themselves on the puck. We were ten players all wearing the uniform of the Montreal Canadiens, all with the same burning enthusiasm. We all wore the famous number nine on our backs. How could we forget that? One day, my Montreal Canadian sweater was too small for me, and it was ripped in several places. My mother said, if you wear that old sweater, people are going to think we are poor. Then she did what she did whenever we needed new clothes. She started to look through the catalog that the Eaton Company in Montreal sent us in the mail every year. My mother was proud. She never wanted to buy our clothes at the general store. The only clothes that were good enough for us were the latest styles from Eaton's catalog. My mother did not like the order forms included in the catalog. They were written in English, and she did not understand a single word of it. To order my hockey sweater, she did what she always did. She took out her writing pad and wrote in her fine school teacher's hand, Dear Monsieur Eaton, Would you be so kind as to send me a Canadian's hockey sweater for my son Rock, who is ten years old and a little bit tall for his age? Dr. Robitaille thinks he is a little too thin. I am sending you three dollars. Please send me the change if there is any. I hope your packing will be better than it was last time. Mr. Eaton answered my mother's letter promptly. Two weeks later, we received the sweater. That day, I had one of the greatest disappointments of my life. 
Instead of the red, white, and blue Montreal Canadian sweater, Mr. Eaton had sent the blue and white sweater of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I had always worn the red, white, and blue sweater of the Montreal Canadiens. All my friends wore the red, white, and blue sweater. Never had anyone in my village worn the Toronto sweater. Besides, the Toronto team was always being beaten by the Canadians. With tears in my eyes, I found the strength to say, I'll never wear that uniform. My boy, said my mother, first you're going to try it on. If you make up your mind about something before you try it, you won't go very far in this life. My mother had pulled the blue and white Toronto Maple Leaf sweater over my head and put my arms into the sleeves. She pulled the sweater down and carefully smoothed the maple leaf right in the middle of my chest. I was crying. I can't wear that! Why not? This sweater is a perfect fit! Maurice Richard would never wear it! You're not Maurice Richard. Besides, it's not what you put on your back that matters, it's what you put inside your head. You'll never make me put in my head to wear a Toronto Maple Leaf sweater. My mother sighed in despair and explained to me, If you don't keep this sweater, which fits you perfectly, I'll have to write to Mr. Eaton and explain that you don't want to wear the Toronto sweater. Mr. Eaton understands French perfectly, but he's English, and he's going to be insulted because he likes the Maple Leafs. If he's insulted, do you think he'll be in a hurry to answer us? Spring will come before you play a single game just because you don't want to wear that nice blue sweater. So, I had to wear the Toronto Maple Leaf sweater. When I arrived at the skating rink in my blue sweater, all the Maurice Richards in red, white, and blue came one by one and looked at me. The referee blew his whistle and I went to take my usual position. The coach came over and told me I would be on the second line. A few minutes later, the second line was called. I jumped onto the ice. The maple leaf sweater weighed on my shoulders like a mountain. The captain and told me to wait. He'd need me later on defense. By the third period, I still had not played. Then one of the defensemen was hit on the nose with a stick and it started to bleed. I jumped onto the ice. My moment had come. The referee blew his whistle and gave me a penalty. He said there were already five players on the ice. That was too much. It was too unfair. This is persecution, I shouted. It's just because of my blue sweater. I crashed my stick against the ice so hard that it broke. I bent down to pick up the pieces. When I got up, the young curate on skates was standing in front of me. My child, he said, just because you're wearing a new Toronto Maple Leaf sweater, it doesn't mean you're going to make the laws around here. A good boy never loses his temper. Take off your skates and go to the church and ask God to forgive you. Wearing my Maple Leaf sweater, I went to the church where I prayed. I asked God to send me right away a hundred million moths that would eat up my Toronto Maple Leaf sweater. Wasn't that a great story? I particularly love the ending because it wasn't what I expected when I read it for the first time as a kid. I hope that you enjoyed the story, and I hope that you'll join me again next time.